Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network reporting to you here today with Brian Popper from the USDA Wildlife Services here to talk about ravens and crows. You know, there's a lot of uh, birds that, that can do a lot of damage to different crops in the state, uh, but ravens and crows have been pretty much you know on the rise of causing a lot of different problems that we wouldn't have previously considered and I wanted to talk specifically with Brian about these things and and what growers can do about them if they really are having problems in their orchards vineyards or on the dairy so crows and ravens can both cause lots of problems to agriculture um, nut producers fruit producers vineyards and one of the major problems that people have with them is a trying to tell them apart Ravens typically are a lot larger in size than crows. They're found typically in fewer numbers, although occasionally you'll have sub-adults that will gather in, in large flocks. But primarily ravens will be in a pair, maybe up to a family group of six. Crows will quite often be found in groups of 20, 30, 50, 100. The main characteristics that we look for to kind of distinguish them is the shape of the tail and the size of the beak. Raven's beaks are very long. They're about two and a half times the size of the head. Crow beaks are about one and a half times the size of the head. And they're, they're a lot more pointy, whereas the raven's beaks, they stay the same depth out of ways, and then they start to angle down. So it gives them kind of more of a Roman nose. There's also some feathers that kind of stick out along the beak a little bit on the, uh, on the raven. And then a lot of times we listen to how they sound. Crows have a higher pitched cawing sound whereas ravens are a lot deeper in tone and those are kind of some of the things that we look for to kind of determine what they are individually when we see them. Uh, some of the issues that we've seen with with crows and ravens uh, in particular ravens what I've seen um, I, I've seen where they've caused problems with newborn calves that are first born they're laying there ravens come over and start pecking at them and We'll peck them in the eyes. As soon as they peck them in the eyes, then that's it. pretty much it. Um, that's it for the calf, and it's not going to survive that. I've seen where they've gone into orchards and damaged irrigation, pecking at the drip irrigation, and basically making it fountain up every time the irrigation's turned on. Uh, one producer, they were spending roughly anywhere from twenty to $30,000 a year replacing um, damaged irrigation in their, in their orchard. They cause problems not just with the irrigation or with, they'll cause damage to the fruits. I've seen where they'll, they'll go through ag fields and they'll peck at the fruit, they'll find the ripe fruit, they'll eat that. They will also, um, they'll damage stuff that most people don't think of as wildlife damage to agriculture. They will damage the machinery. We've seen where they will pull wires, they'll peck at hoses, they'll peck at anything rubbery, stuff like that. So they will, you know, damage the machinery, they'll damage the buildings. Um, you know, they're, they're very smart animals, so they figure out certain things, and they also are very curious. So they see somebody messing with some sort of equipment, next thing you know, they want to start messing with that equipment. Um, <clears throat> Ravens and crows are both very intelligent animals. They're very difficult to deal with. Um, and you have few methods you can use that are very that are effective. However, if you aren't successful using one method, they will learn and then you won't be able to use that method again. So a lot of times when we deal with ravens, we have to kind of try with ravens and crows, we have to try and figure out what's our what's our best method and what's going to be our backup methods that we're going to go to because we know that as soon as we if we don't get them or get them all using the first method we got to switch to the second method to deal with crows there's a standing depredation order 2143 that authorizes the use of um, lethal measures to remove crows you have to do some sort of non-lethal techniques but if they're causing damage to agriculture or other stuff you can go ahead and and deal with them Ravens, there's, they're currently not on the depredation order. Uh, there's talk that they may at some point be added to it. So to deal with, with ravens, you actually have to go through U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and get a migratory bird permit. First step of that is contact Wildlife Services and get a Form 37 filled out that you can then submit to 
um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Thank you, Brian. Read more about these things in our publications, American Vineyard, Pacific Nut Producer, California Fresh Fruit, California Dairy and Vegetables West Magazines. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.